presenting the Microtropicality Home, currently used as an architectural firm because of its features and the fact that the architects that design it, along with their mascot goats didn't want to move out. However, it can be easily converted into a house or hipster cafe. Stay till the end to find out what happened. For generations, living in the tropics has never simply been about avoiding the rain and the sun. The history of tropical architecture can be traced back as early as the beginning of indigenous tropical vernacular societies that were adapted into different cultures while maintaining the norms. Oftentimes, it got its stereotype of pitched roofs and overhangs that were celebrated in many tourist areas but ironically left out of the path of tropical architecture searching and development in this globalization era. In the days of environmental and energy crises like today, the climatic design has to make a triumphal comeback with more adjustment for the latest experimentation and research of contemporary architectural expression, which relates the buildings to their surroundings and location in order to achieve harmony between architecture and tropical nature, so it could be adapted and modified for future architects to come in order to ensure what is best for the greater good. Design functions as the main office of research artistic design plus architecture, in short called as radar, and is used as an exploration canvas for how we can adapt the spirit of vernacular spaces of tropical architecture while experimenting with its own microclimate or microtropicality. Microtropicality is to design the building to respond to the demands of the climate and the human experience. It is much more than just to add an eave to cover a door or a window from rain and sun, to design an umbrella roof, but at the same time to ventilate and illuminate, to make the landscape dense in foliage in order to ventilate and refresh the environment. It is to design a multi-layer facade to reduce radiation, direct the breeze inside, shade the windows, cool the walls, and direct the views. In the end, the sum of necessary elements gives a free expressiveness to this tropical architecture, which is congruent with the dimly lit space, which is a condition for well-being. Design is to demonstrate a dialogue between architecture and tropical environments that may break some basic codes of the tropical architecture approach. Retaining water while channeling it versus directly channeling or avoiding rainwater. The dramatic angle of the pitch roof in the tropics was influenced by its historical approach of channeling water to the ground with great efficiency so the building might endure heavy rain and extreme seasons. However, as structural innovation has been adapted into daily planning, most buildings still adopt this approach without an adequate method of retaining the water. Design is to set an example of how one can still distribute water loads while trying to absorb as much water as possible and release it slowly for later usage. 100% of the rainwater absorbed from all the sites will later be used for total irrigation. As the tropical norm has been integrated for hundreds of years, most tropical buildings have unwritten guidelines or manners of how one should integrate the facade approach with its roof. Design is to set an example of how functionality can be integrated with an aesthetic approach. In order to minimize the usage of artificial lighting during productive daytime, most tropical codes recommend a maximum plan width of 12 meters, which limits the massing configuration. The design is to experiment with puncturing gradual vertical openings within an 18-meter deep plan in order to maximize natural lighting during the daytime without compromising form and space. Manipulating internal temperature through east-west versus north-south orientation. Due to the extreme heat emitted, most tropical buildings tend to use a north-south orientation to maximize illumination while minimizing heat transmitted to the building. The design is to experiment with the facade surface on the east and west sides of the building and use that opportunity to create a greater temperature difference that controls its own microclimate. An architecture that recognizes the specificities of tropical latitudes and demonstrates its expressive design guidelines will reinforce the local culture and, in a better way, 
Host people's experiences adapt to the spatiality of the place and recognize the socioeconomic and human conditions a set of attributes that will facilitate their appropriation and recognition. Due to the COVID pandemic, in order to adapt and sustain the business and their goats, the architecture firm converted their beloved office into a hipster cafe where work, meetings, corporate events, and just hipsters chilling can all be integrated under the goat's grass roof. In conclusion, adapting to the specificities of tropical latitudes requires more than just adding pitched roofs and overhangs. By embracing the concept of microtropicality, architects can create buildings that respond to the demands of their climate and human experience while still maintaining aesthetic appeal. Through innovations like water retention, functional facades, and temperature control, architects can create a new era of tropical architecture that reinforces local culture and provides a better experience for all. Thanks for staying till the end. If you find this video helpful, please like and subscribe to our channel for more content.